Hey Nathan, happy Thanksgiving, but more importantly, happy Black Friday. It's never a happy Black Friday. It's a terrifying day you know, all throughout America. <laughs> yes, because a lot of money goes out the window and into a lot of stuff that potentially you don't end up using. Actually, I have a story about that. Oh yeah, go ahead. Well, before I tell you that, in this video, we're going to give you the best deals on used cars for Black Friday. Do you know you can actually get discounts on cars on Black Friday? Not only that, but used cars right now during COVID are super hot and they're really, really hard to find discounted. So we actually have this discounted list, which comes from our friends at IC Cars. Yep, we've got the top 10 most discounted cars and uh, by what percentage they're discounted and how much money you'll save. Uh, and these are, you know, everyday cars. We're not looking at Pagani's or Bugatti's. Yeah, I was hoping a Corvette would be on here. It's not. So, so, so let me tell you my uh, Black Friday story. Remember when they did like doorbuster things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, me and my friend Dave used to get up at like four in the morning and go do the doorbusters, right? And sometimes you get like cool stuff for free if you were there early enough. Right, right. Like gloves and hats, nothing expensive. Well, we went to the local sporting store and guess what they had on sale for, it was like a hundred bucks. A, um, a katana. No, it was something you absolutely don't need and you think you want, but you probably don't. A ping pong table. Oh! It's big. Yeah. Yeah, it's not easy to transport. So I bought this like, you know, $100 ping pong table, which is normally $250. Uh -huh. uh, brought it home and of course got the rat act read to me by my wife. And she's like, where are we going to put this? And I'm like, uh, wherever we're going to play ping pong, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so I wound up in the garage? Well, so I dragged it downstairs in the basement, um, and then, of course, you know, like tucked into some leftover turkey. Uh, and about uh, five years later, it was still in the box <laughs> in the basement because I never wanted to really get together with anybody and put together a ping pong table that we had no, we literally had no room for. I mean, you could set up the ping pong table, but you forget that you need like another, what, five feet on either side of it. Well, yeah, to actually use it. Is yeah. that the one that's in our lounge or our lobby? No, no, no. That came with the offices. <laughs> oh, okay. I was going to say, that lasted table. a long time. So, so you know who has it now? Yeah. My neighbor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I offloaded it on him. <laughs> well, there you go. So he benefited from your doorbuster prize. Yeah, yeah. He benefited from a free ping pong table that, that I had to drag around. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we've uh, wasted enough time. Let's talk about um, uh, really uh, interesting cars. And did you know that the average uh, discount for Black Friday is 5.5%? That is provided that you can find them, and there aren't a lot of vehicles that are discounted, but the ones that are on this list are surprisingly popular. Yep, so let's start with number 10. Uh, this vehicle is uh, a very popular crossover, the Hyundai Tucson. Now, we're not talking about new ones. We're talking about, you know, used ones, and we're not talking about year. I'm, I'm guessing this is probably recent. Yeah, all of these are, uh, we guess, within the past few years, yeah. so they're, they're fairly new. And in many cases, they still have warranties that are attached to them, provided that they have low enough mileage. And, you know, they could very well be absolute prime vehicles. We can't guarantee that. So the average discount on the Tucson ranked, you know, we're doing this from 10 to number one, as we always do, is 5.2%, uh, about a $923 savings. What do you think of the Tucson? The Tucson is a really good and underrated vehicle. One of the best parts about it, especially if you can get the turbocharged one, but even the regular ones, you get a much nicer interior than the competitors in terms of amenities. Um, you got to admit, Hyundai is doing really nice interiors, and they've been doing nice interiors for the past few years. So you could still, you know, these older ones are still going to be quite good. Decent all-wheel drive system. We've actually beat these things off-road. They've it's done very well. It's actually got like a center locker. Yes, it does. And, and on top of that, we're talking about really good power-to-weight ratio on top of decent mileage. They're more than competitive with the best, the Jap well, the best Japanese brands out there. Yeah, I mean, Hyundai has just really uh, upped their game. Yeah. Uh, and the Tucson, you know, is I call it the... Um, the just right, you know, it's it's kind of fits a lot of different lifestyles. It's not too small, it's not too big, uh, you know, it, it serves well. The reliability is good. Uh, I would say, uh, like you said, get the turbo. Uh, well, if you, yeah, if you want fun, if you want fun, uh, you know, the the one thing, the one downside to a, a Tucson uh, is it's a little bit anonymous, right? I yeah. mean, you'll you, like you'll never like you'll you'll lose it in the Walmart parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> you will, and you will like, oh, with a lot oh, of the mine's other, red. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of competitors that you'll lose as well. I mean, there's very few that really stand out, and unfortunately, one, the ones that do stand out aren't on this list. So, sorry about that. 
All right, how about number nine? Number nine is the Subaru Outback. Uh, it has a discount of 5.3%, which means the savings can be around $1,293. That is pretty good. Subaru Outbacks do hold their value quite well. Yeah, uh, you know, we've had one. We purchased one. Mm -hmm. uh, we bought it with the four-cylinder, yeah. uh, which is up here at a mile above sea level. Um, well, slow is not the right word. Anemic, Anemic. might be the right word. Uh, if you really want something and, you know, you're looking for performance, definitely stay away from the four-cylinder. It's fuel efficient, but it's really underpowered a mile above sea level. Maybe at sea level it's okay. Oh, yeah, I've driven them at sea level, yeah. and, and they're fine. It's just it's... It's nothing inspiring, and with the CVT, unfortunately, they're very slow off the line. But the good news is they have an excellent all-wheel drive system. They're really good in snow, uh, mediocre off-road. They're not as good as they used to be off-road, but a really good package, and once again, an extremely popular vehicle. Now, the one, one thing I would say about Subarus is uh, they're built... You know, they're built kind of um, to, um, well, not built in obsolescence quite, but, you know, they do get used up because people drive them and use them hard, right? Oh, so, yeah. So even though they are built well, uh, you know, you, if you go and look at used ones, they'll usually have a lot of miles on them, and they'll usually be well worn, right? So people throw dogs in them, people throw kids in them, and, you know, what dogs and kids do, right? It's, it's, it's a vehicle that gets gets a lot of use. So yeah, just, just keep that in mind if you're looking for a used one. So you'll get to see a lot of like, you know, worn plastics, which, you know, don't hold up really well. That, that's very true. And then there's nature freaks out there who will try to save a raccoon and the raccoon will completely destroy the interior. <laughs> yeah, Look for that. Yeah. Raccoons and hunting badgers are really bad for the interior and of Outbacks. It, it, it is also, at least here in Colorado, probably not the case like in Florida, but at least here in Colorado, it is the vehicle that novices and newbies will take off road and all that, you know, <laughs> and everything that comes along with that. There, there is one funny thing, and, and it's a funny thing about Subarus in general. You always know a local or somebody who's lived here for a very long time who's a ski bum because they'll be driving an old beat up Outback or Forester or something like that and the ski rack on top is actually worth more than the vehicle below it. And speaking of the ski rack, it does have this cool feature where it actually, the little crossbar does come out. Isn't, that is a very cool thing. So you can yeah. disconnect the uh, crossbars if you get them and you can actually adjust them and move them so you so, can So you put can put stuff on the roof. Yeah. Right, right. Very, uh, it's a very cool feature. But lots of space. Uh, uh, very comfortable, yeah. you know, uh, uh, very, um, you know, the infotainment is very basic, the it's controls very are very basic. basic. It's the kind of car you could, you know, get your mom to drive, and a lot of them still have, you know, the old ones especially will have keys, so you won't have the push button confusion. There's not a lot like of, of like newfangled tech, uh, and Andre's had one for, gosh, now five years, and he just swears by eyesight, so if you're looking for the latest safety features, um, Subaru uses uh, dual cameras uh, basically to um, provide the uh, information that the car needs for autonomous braking, uh, for um, proximity, uh, um, uh, cruise control, right? Uh, and, and Andre says it works really well and he's, he's Except happy in heavy snow. Yeah. Yeah, because they get it obscured. He's had some issues. Uh, so, you know, windows. he's had his windows fail like a bunch of times, <laughs> the switches. So, like I say, there are issues with Subarus, but it is it is a car that will hold up. All right, number eight. And number eight is the Ford Escape. The Ford Escape used to be one of my favorite vehicles. The um, first gen. The, the first gen, well, not the first gen, the, 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 technically the second generation was, was my favorite for a while. That discount is 5.4%, and you can get an average savings of $923. Now, I like the one that's kind of the boxy one. Oh, the, that's the first generation. Yeah, the very first generation. That, that's a Mazda uh, shared platform. So they had the uh, Tribute, I believe, that was also on the same platform. The, the newer one had the first generation EcoBoost. And I really liked it when it came out because it was the most powerful crossover in its class. Those things were rockets. Remember we went on the program. We went on the program, yeah. which was really funny. It was actually a very interesting program. That was one of the earlier programs that you and I went on yeah. together. Yeah. And um, that, was, that was interesting. But the thing is about this vehicle, and, and one thing I maintain is that it can be really good in the snow, but every single one that I've received from the manufacturer came with the wrong tires. So if you're in the snow belt, in snow country like we are, you need to keep in mind you need better tires. The all-wheel drive system works fantastic, but it won't work for a damn if you don't have the right tires on there. Uh, there the, are total street tires on there. You know, the, the, the more uh, escapes they make, the more I like the first generation because the first one was kind of boxy and kind of masculine, right? Yeah. They kind of softened up the styling and made it more uh, round and more kind of futuristic. 
Uh, oh, now, well, now it looks almost like a Porsche. In the right, front. yeah, I know it does. Yeah, it looks like a, like a Cayenne. Like yeah, a it does. Cayenne, yeah. It, and, and, you know, some people, you know, don't like it. Some people do. I, as I said, I like the second generation. The first generation, you know, I almost bought one because I wanted a manual with all-wheel drive, but they didn't have all-wheel drive. They only had front-wheel drive with the manual. The thing about the first generation, which is really cool, is that you have tons of space. And if you get the Mercury, I believe, that first generation, you could get a hybrid. I mean, early hybrid, but still. You know, it was uh, pretty damn efficient. So I've been buying, you know, we've been buying a lot of kind of classic cars, uh, and I've learned some lessons from that, and, and you can apply that to these. I look for, obviously, one-owner vehicles, mm -hmm. if you can get that. Uh, always do, uh, and it doesn't pick everything up, but always do like a car fax or a car report. Right. Right, uh, because let's, let's face it, they're like California cars are much more desirable than New York cars. Or, or anything from the East Coast. Or anything where the there's rust salt, over yeah. there is just oof. Yeah. And, and that will tell you. Yeah. A, a car report will tell you where it's from. Uh, you know, uh, I figure uh, it, it used to be that when I was growing up, you know, like we had an old LTD, mm -hmm. that had a lifespan of maybe 100,000 miles. And after 50,000 miles, it was like half used up. I think now because of modern... Uh, Processes and protection. A car has a lifespan of about two hundred thousand miles if it's taken care of. If it's taken, if you know, if it's taken care of. Yeah. Uh, and so I like to I like to buy used cars at a hundred thousand miles, give or take. You know, eighty is great, hundred and twenty is not so great. But I really start to worry about vehicles when they get up to like a hundred and fifty, hundred and seventy, because you get to the point where then you have to start replacing a lot of things, like imp expensive things, right? Not oh, yeah. starters. Starters are cheap, but like suspension, sometimes transmissions, transmissions you know yeah. uh, even engines right uh, things that are expensive to, and then the other thing that happens let's say even all that is good if you put 150 to 250,000 miles on it, like the seats start to get pretty worn out. Yeah, and nobody replaces those, right? They're kind of just like you sit in the thing and you're like, what the heck is that? Plastics start, you know, cracking. Th things start happening. And, you know, there, there are examples of really good super used cars, cars that just have tons of miles because people might drive one, one on the highway all the time. One owner, but maybe they put 200,000 miles on it, but they only did that in five years. And I've met people like that. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad vehicle, it just means that it's had a lot of wear and tear on the highway, and so you have to kind of keep that all in mind. One important thing is that a lot of vehicles on this list are all-wheel drive ones. All-wheel drive vehicles need to have the tires rotated often, and one of the things you need to look at when you go, well, actually, with any vehicles, you have to look at the tires. A lot of used car dealerships try to get rid of the cars or put really cheap tires on those cars before they get rid of like them. Like no-name Asian brand tires. Which happen to my which car. Which don't last or <laughs> which aren't any good. The other thing uh, I would say, this is Roman's used car buying tip, right? If you're buying it off of uh, a, uh, an individual, not at a car dealership or uh -huh. a used car lot, uh, if that person has temporary plates on it, do not purchase it. Yeah, I agree. Because uh, that well, means they just bought it, and for some reason, they don't want it. And or they they're trying to flip it. Or they're trying to flip it. Either way, you do not want that car. I got, we got burned. Remember that old YJ? Oh, jeez. Remember? So what happened to us is we bought a YJ. It had 150,000 miles on it. This is a Jeep, of course, right? Yeah. That's a square headlight one. Uh, and the guy had a temporary plate. And I'm like, why aren't you keeping this? He just bought it. And he said, well, my girlfriend uh, has a, a little baby, and so she's afraid to put the baby. And I was like, that's logical, right? You don't yeah. want to put a, a little baby in a... Well, 20-year-old Jeep. I'm an idiot, but most people wouldn't. Right, right. So that makes sense. So, mm -hmm. you know, I buy the thing. Uh, and then here in Colorado, we have a mission, right? Uh, so I take it. It completely fails. So I take it to the uh, repair shop. You know what was wrong with it? Uh, it's Canadian? No. I looked, I looked underneath. It had cats. There was nothing in the cats. So they were hollow catalytic converters. So uh, the components that actually make that thing they're take... expensive because cats are expensive. They, they're very expensive. Like 500 or 600 bucks. These yeah. are expensive things. And so what basically he did was he bought it, he took it, it wouldn't pass emissions, and then he just flipped it and sold, it, sold this problem onto me. Yeah, that sounds exactly uh, like it. And we've had a lot of very recent uh, experience with buying used cars because Roman's on a tear. And uh, so every time I wake up on a Monday, I think, oh, what did he buy now? Okay, let's move on. Speaking of buying cars and, and underrated cars, but very popular cars, number seven. seven on our list is the Toyota Camry, which has a 5.4%. Remember, this is according to IC Cars. And that means that you have an average savings of 1000 Thirty-nine dollars. Yeah, it's a good. It's a good deal. It's a really good deal, and it's a Camry, and it's a Toyota. You know, when people come up to me and they're not car people, and they say, "What should I buy?" and it's like, "Okay, you want to buy a car or an SUV?" Car. Okay, Camry. It's almost always the go-to car, especially if you can get the four-cylinder. I always, always, always tell people if you want super reliability, stick with a four-cylinder Camry. You will be better off and. 
I'm not the only one who says that. There are a lot of other internet people and other experts who say that, but I agree with them. I've seen Toyota Camrys with four-cylinder, like third-generation ones that are 350,000 miles with the original engine transmission. Yeah, so, I mean, there's really, what, three different engine choices in a Camry? There's a four, there's a six, and then there's a hybrid. Hybrid, right. Right, which is an Atkins cycle. It's a little bit, it's a little bit different than the traditional four-cylinder. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, what Toyota does is uh, they've got this uh, basic motto, and I'm going to simplify it, but it's true, you know, don't fix it if it ain't broke, right? And so they hold on to the technology for a long, long a time. A lot longer than most, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, look at the 4Runner, right? It's got uh, the 4-liter with a 5-speed transmission. I can't think of any other new vehicle that has a 5-speed transmission. That vehicle is older than most of the staff at TFL. <laughs> yes, it's true. But, but there's a reason. It's got, everybody's going like the 8 or 10 speeds, and they still have a 5-speed. Right. Because they know that that transmission is going to go 300,000 miles. Right. And and, and that's what you're getting, you know, with the Camry. Yeah. Uh, Although the uh, the Camry did uh, go to an eight speed on the. Uh, their, I'm not their, saying the five speed. I'm saying the reliability. Right, right. right. But the, the the eight speed automatic transmission. Some people have said mm, it's not so great, and there's some issues. I haven't heard of any personally, but I've read about them. So they went from you know, uh, well, well back they've had a four speed, and they went to I think a five, and then a seven. You know, they they moved their way up. Now they're eight, unless you buy the uh, hybrid, which is a CVT. Toyota does engines and transmissions right usually, and this is a screaming bargain for a car if you can get a thousand bucks off on it, because it's just a solid car. No, you're not going to get the TRD for this type of discount. No, the TRD not. is, and, and I actually think it's kind of fun. It's still, and, and you're not going to get the new all-wheel drive Camry either. No, you're not going to get the all-wheel drive <laughs> Camry for this. Although they do have a or the, like a second-generation Camry that has all-wheel drive, which is kind of cool, but they're hard to find. All right, should we move on yeah, to the go, next one? Go ahead. Yeah, what's the next one? The next one, number six, is the Chevy Equinox, which has a discount of five point five percent, so you can get an average savings of one thousand nine dollars. Now, the thing about the Chevy Equinox is that it's another one of those also-played vehicles, and there are so many of these that are in fleets. Rental fleets, uh, industrial fleets, you name it. I've seen them. Fleet sales are what are keeping Chevy competitive with Honda and with uh, Toyota, you know, with the RAV4 and the CRV. But the Equinox is not a bad vehicle. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not exactly what I would call inspiring or a ton of fun. But they're fairly solid vehicles. By the way, in case you guys are wondering, IC Cars analyzed 1.8 million used cars on sale this week leading up to Black Friday. Uh, and that's where these numbers are coming from. So it is a big sample size. Right, it is. And it's a nationwide sample, too. They, they, it it's comes from all over the country. And, so, if you, and if you live in, like, the UK, just ignore. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah. you don't even get an Equinox, do you? Yeah. Hi, Boris. Okay. Um, All right, number five. Number five is the Nissan Rogue. Now, <laughs> <laughs> big surprise, right? Yeah. Um, but the thing about the Rogue is that what it doesn't specify is whether it's the Rogue or the Rogue Sport. Now, bear in mind, when you look at Rogue sales, they combine the regular Rogue and the Rogue Sport, which are actually different vehicles. Yes. Um, I think it's just a regular Rogue. I think regular Rogue. The okay. Rogue Sport is smaller, came out not that long ago. Uh, so 5.6% discount, uh, uh -huh. average of $984. It's, it's Nissan's most popular car. Oh, it is by far. Yeah, they sell a boatload of them. Yeah, they do. Um, you know, remember when we took it to Moab and you actually off-roaded it? It was quite good, actually. It, it did really good. That was the first generation Rogue. This yeah. is when, uh, the first time Roman and I went to Moab together. Um, I got to say, how old, 10 how old years is your ago. daughter? Uh, my daughter is 16. Yeah, it's like, it, this is the car that every 16-year-old girl drives. There is one major problem with it. Do you, I know you're right about that. Um, do you remember coming back? We came back in a snowstorm. Actually, yeah. it's, it's snowing right now right, in a similar way. Yeah. And it was rough. It was kind of a funny drive because we saw a cop going up the hill sideways. It was a lot of funny stuff. But the problem with that car, the biggest problem, the headlights were terrible. Do you yeah, remember the that? Yeah. The headlights were awful. So if you get one of the older, early generation ones, replace those headlights with something more powerful, you'll be much happier. So, but so, it's a good car. So it's definitely wins the award for the most ironic name of any vehicle oh, in, the, know, in the vehicle kingdom. Because there's just there's nothing rogue about it. It is like straight down the middle. <laughs> right? Everything everything about it is about as conventional as you can get. Yeah. Right? The controls are conventional, the seating's conventional, the, 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 the kind of the size of the thing is right in the middle of the segment. It's not you know, it's not very big. It's not very small. No, it's just it's just right down the middle. And actually, the newest one that just came out this year, right? Uh, they've really upped the, the kind of the the quality of the interior. Oh, the interior is beautiful, beautiful on that car. They uh, really the, did an excellent job. The used ones are a little bit basic, right? They're kind right. of I mean, they're kind of Nissan parts bin. 
So, you know, it's the same stock that's in the Altima, right? It's the same switches that are in the, <laughs> the Frontier, basically, right? I mean, this is, this is a, and th that's not a bad thing because uh, a, a Consumer Reports did a study mm -hmm. uh, and they found that the most reliable cars share uh, platforms and switch gear and everything because they build so much of those, right? They've refined them and, and, and kept them right, running so properly. So that, that like turn signal stock, if it's in a lot of different cars, they've pretty much figured out, you know, how to make it last and how to make it work. I would agree with that except for the Germans. That's a whole different thing in terms of turn signal stocks. Oh my God. Um, the thing is about this, uh, one, one more thing about the Nissan Rogue is that uh, a lot of you guys are going to be saying, well, that CVT is terrible. Here's the thing about that CVT is that uh, they were recalled ones and whatnot. Um, as long as that vehicle has had its recall, those CVT early Rogues are actually still, and a lot of them are still on the road and they're still putting on miles, like a couple hundred thousand miles in some cases. So yes, there have been problems, but in some cases, they're actually doing pretty good. The newer ones are supposed to be much better. All right, number four, Nathan, is the only car on this list uh, that I think has a model version for the enthusiast. I, I would agree with you. And not only that, but this, this vehicle, uh, I owned one. I had a technically a second generation one. Um, I even have a picture on my phone I finally found. And that is the Subaru Forester. Uh, vehicle behind me, and the discount is 5.9%. Average savings is $1,268. Good. This is a better car in my book. Than the Outback? Than, than not only than the Outback, but also for, for families, it's better than the Crosstrek um, because it's got a lot more, a lot more uh, room. A lot more room. Um, the platform is, you know, Subaru shares a lot of components throughout their line, but this competes directly with the Honda CRV, and it's sort of a dummy-proof car. So Nathan, I said that this was the only car for the enthusiast. Which one is the enthusiast? Well, it's got to be the XT. Exactly, XT Turbo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, and they're hard to find. Uh, <laughs> and I'm sure that, you know, for all of you out there looking for used cars, this is probably not the one that's going to have the 5.9% uh, discount. Yeah, and not only that, most likely it'll be, it's, people will have driven it really hard. And some kids will actually or go... Or chipped it. Or chipped or it or lowered it. it. I've seen it. people lower them, which is crazy. Um, it does have a hood scoop. Yeah, it does have a hood scoop, and it's actually a functional hood scoop, which is crazy. So let's move on to number three. Now, this is interesting because I didn't expect to see this on this list. I didn't think they would be that popular. I think it's the best looking car on this list. I think it's like a baby Jaguar. There, I, I do, I, I do miss them, and uh, unfortunately, well, it's the Ford Fusion. Um, the discount is six point three percent, which is actually really impressive for a savings average of $982. It's also one of the only sedans you can get in all-wheel drive. All-wheel drive. Legacy, of course, but that's not on the list. Right. Well, it actually has a lot of similarities to the Toyota Camry in terms of what you can get for it. So you can get you know, a base model. You can get one with an EcoBoost that's sporty. You can get... Oh, there's that really sporty one. There's the really sporty, sporty one. one yeah. All-wheel drive you can get. You can also get a hybrid. And there's a couple of hybrid versions of it as well. So. You know, we're talking about a vehicle that has, you know, ba huge bandwidth, but unfortunately Ford doesn't build these vehicles anymore. Uh, they just stopped. So it, it does have some shortcomings, as we found out when we drove one uh, during a snowstorm from uh, Chicago to Colorado. Uh, God, the back a, seat is really small. It's, it's not great for big people. I, I was back there. <laughs> um, it's and, got an early version of Sync, which is not great either. Yeah, it depends the, which one you get. It but depends on which one. The early, the that, early Sync is the Sync is, the, you uh -huh. know, the early Syncs were not great. Uh, yeah. you know, we're up to like 3.5 now. If you get Sync 1, God help you. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the later ones are much better. The newest one's great. Uh, the, the other thing about what well, the one we drove had like bad tires and we were going right. through heavy snow. And I will never forgive you for putting us on that road trip. Um, and you know, we could have flown. It would have been easier. It would, <laughs> it would have been a lot easier. And we'd be very awake. Uh, we were. It's, uh, it's, it was I a, think it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a little tight, right? If you look at like the competitors to it, like the Jetta, um, no, I'm sorry, the um, Passat, right? The Passat had a much bigger back, back seat. Mm -hmm. uh, the Camry had, you know, a lot more reliability going for it. You know, it was like, uh, it was probably the, the best of the full size or mid size sedan mid -size. segment. Yeah, yeah, mid size sedan segment. But it, it was compromised in a lot of kind of important ways. Yeah, so I mean, it's a give and take. Uh, you know who had one who loved one? Who? Mr. Truck. Oh, yeah, yeah, he had yeah, a his, his daughter had one and yeah. she loved it and then she crashed it, but, and, and she was safe. 
But you know, definitely, a, if, if a truck guy likes it, you know, something it, to think about. And, and it, you know, regular transmission, which is nice, so you mm -hmm. don't have a CVT unless you have the hybrid. Unless you have the hybrid, which is of course going to be, uh, and you know, even pretty stylish on the interior, right? Uh, uh, some of the controls are pretty funky. It, it's kind of it has that Ford uh, slanted style design, and uh, I didn't mind it so much. And the hybrid was one of the early vehicles that had little leaves that were growing if you drove it correctly. And actually, the S, the sporty one, was really quick. Really quick. quick yeah. Like, yeah. I don't want to say it was like two it was over almost three hundred horsepower. It was some crazy amount. Yeah, Not quite for a vehicle that was relatively maybe, light. Maybe two fifty. I forget, it's been a while. Uh but yeah, it was really good. All right. Uh number uh two Nathan is uh, another Nissan. Yeah, the Nissan Altima, yep. which has a discount of six point five percent. The savings of $1,032. A and direct competitor to the Fusion. It is a direct competitor. Now, the newest one I really like. I, I, Altima is, is kind of a give-and-take car. Very popular rental places. And man, I, almost every rental agency has one of these. Um, they're sort of a generic car in that respect. But there were some hot versions of the car. There were some interesting ones. Recently, they even uh, brought out an all-wheel drive version of it. Yeah, uh, you know, I would say the Nissan Altima is kind of in that Tucson where you walk out of the grocery store and you're not sure which one is yours because it's a little generic, right? Yeah. It was it was highly discounted. Let's face it. Yeah, uh, it was kind of the uh, uh, the budget version of a full of a mid-sized uh, sedan. Yeah, uh, and so they sold a lot of them, uh, and you know, it, it's relatively reliable. Uh, uh, it's you know relatively roomy. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, does they it, handle all right, too. They handle all right. Does, does it have anything? You know, you always look at these cars and you're like, what makes it special? What's the headline? If I were reviewing it, what's the headline? So what's the headline for the Ultima? Well, the newest Ultima is, is affordable luxury right. if you get the right version of it. And also they have a turbocharged version for the newer ones. Uh, that but, is, but these quick. older ones, it's hard to write a headline. It is. It's so basically, it's, it's, it tells you when you fill up. You know, the only thing I can think of is it's, it's got that funky feature where when you're filling up the tires, it beeps when you get to like 30 psi. Which actually really does help in certain environments. The other thing about the Ultima that I will say is that I've found that they've always been very comfortable for the driver. They are very comfortable. They're I'll give very, you the most, yeah. one of the most comfortable cars in the segment. In, in its segment, absolutely. Very comfortable car. So there's a positive. But it's just, it's, it's not exactly going to light very many people's wicks, okay? It's, it's just not all that inspiring. You, you but know, the thing about the Ultima and a lot of Nissan cars of that era is it's a Carlos Ghosn era, right? Mm -hmm. And Carlos was definitely a bean counter. Oh, big time. You know, and so, so Nissan went from, like, and you can see it, right? They, you know, the most interesting car the Nissan has is a Z. And they haven't updated it forever until now. Yeah, until now. Right. And so what what Carlos did with, for that company was he saved it, but he saved it by basically saying, you know, we're just going to build uh, the most affordable, budget-minded cars. And, and that, you know, for enthusiasts like me and you, there's just nothing there to get excited about. Yeah, but not people who are looking at a list like this aren't necessarily enthusiasts. Right. Yeah, it's a good car. Yeah. Now let's get to number one. And number one is a little surprising for me because it's the second Toyota on this list, and it is. One of the most popular cars in the world. sold in the world. Yeah. Millions have been sold. It's the Toyota Corolla. Yeah, it's got the highest discount, 6.7% for an average savings of $967. Uh, maybe it's because they built so many of them. It is remarkable how many of these cars they built. And they're good little cars. And the great thing about the Corolla, unlike some of the other competitors, is that they do have a couple different versions of it. There's hatchbacks, there's sort of kind of hotter ones, and you know, very uh, economically minded ones. There's even a hybrid that's available. Um, in fact, the only thing they don't have available here in the States with the Corolla is an all-wheel drive version of it. But they make them. Yeah, they used to yeah, make them. Yeah. You could, you, actually, they had... A long time ago, ago yeah. yeah. You could get, and yeah. it's funny that, you know, the Civic, which directly competes with it, right? The two are like, are like neck and neck, isn't on this list, and yet the Corolla is. Yeah, actually, there are no Hondas on this list. No, there are no Hondas. And, and that may have to do with the fact that Honda, for one thing, never sells the fleets. I think you're right. So they don't sell... Uh, as many to fleets, which then just use them and then flip them, right? Right. right. And so these are going to direct, you know, to, to consumers. Um, and, and the other thing about the Corolla, and, and I'll, I'll say this once again until the cows come home, it's another default car. When people are asking, what's a good, reliable car for me to buy? And it's like, okay, you want something smaller than a Camry? Get a Corolla. It's just that simple. Yeah, and you know, style-wise, 
Uh, they're pretty uh, interesting. They're not, you know, I don't think they're boring. I well, think the newest ones I think are really good looking. Yeah. The, the, the other ones have been a little generic, but they're fine. Yeah. 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 Uh, if you want more fun, um, get yourself a manual Civic of the same year and you'll have a little bit more fun. That's always been my thing too. And another good car, but it's not on this list. All right, Nathan, before we get to our, we actually have a couple trucks here because, yeah. well, you know, we've got a lot of truck fans and it's out bonus. there. Yeah, it's a bonus. Uh, out of these cars, which is the one you get? What's, what's the well, I'm a family guy. Yeah. Um, and honestly, uh, none of them. Uh, but <laughs> That's horrible. I'm sorry. I, look, I, 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 I'd rather have something. You you know, gotta, I'm going to say, you got to pick one. Okay, i got to pick one? Yeah. Okay, then it would probably be either a Camry if I wasn't living in snow country. And because I am living in snow country, I would probably say... The Ford Escape, if it had the EcoBoost. I'd probably get the Tucson, because you can actually sort of kind of take it off-road. Yeah, yeah, actually, the Tucson's a good choice as well. The, uh, and a Forester, I've had good luck with Foresters before, but I wouldn't want the CVT, so I'd want like an older one that still offered the manual transmission or the automatic. That's pretty old. That's yeah, you have to go back quite a ways to get there. All right, so let's talk about trucks. We yeah. always like to do a bonus. So a best used car deal, uh, actually best used truck deal uh, right now is the uh, GMC 1500 uh, with a 6.2% discount discount or $2,513 less than normal. Wow, GMC Sierra's used ones apparently uh, are uh, hot used trucks right now. Yeah, but um, so uh, just a step down from there is the uh, Ford F-150. F-5.1%? Yeah, 5.1% uh, and also the Chevy Silverado, which is also at 5.1%. Which is weird because the Silverado and the Sierra are identical, right? They're just, you know, one's got a GMC badge and one's got the bow tie on it. Yeah, it, it's a question of popularity and also it, it's funny thing about GMCs, usually they're a little bit more luxurious or they have a little bit more Yeah, maybe kit. they're more expensive so they may be at farther to fall. Yeah, uh, th that's exactly what I think. I think they f fell a little bit further based on what they were uh, priced at. Now, if you're curious about the Ram 1500, yes, it's on this list. Um, but <laughs> right now, the, it's by the widest margin from the top, only 4.5% discount average. Yeah, you know, used uh, trucks are actually, and keep in mind, these are um, discounts off of what they were selling for. But they're selling for like 9% more than they were this time last year. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so, which is so, crazy considering so, it's COVID. So, so used trucks went up 9%. And then for Black Friday, you know, these guys came down uh, like 6%. But you're still 3%. You're you know, still paying more, more out of than pocket. You would have at, this, at, at this time last year because, well, you know, used car prices and used truck prices have just exploded because of COVID, right? And one of the things that's happening, uh, uh, and I was reading a story in the Wall Street Journal, I believe, and they're saying it's going to continue to happen, is uh, that dealers are stocking a lot fewer vehicles. Uh, and so uh, that means that the ones that they're selling are selling for an, a higher average transaction price. Uh, so dealers are making more money and car manufacturers are making more money. And, right. And they're saying that it's probably going to continue. Like they used, the average you know, car on the lot used to be on the lot for like 65 days. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I recall from the article, it's down to 52 days now. So a lot less inventory, which also get, kind of filters down to the used market, right? Right, exactly. So, so there's less out there to choose from, hence more expensive prices on used cars in general. So I think what that translates to is less choice. Yeah, it, and the choice has narrowed quite a bit. And we know this because we look at used cars all the time. Roman has permanent apps in his phone that pop up whenever he's even sleeping saying, oh, there's something very interesting that you want to buy and freak everybody else out with. And it's like, oh, okay. You know what I saw? Hmm. I, 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 this weekend, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not buying any more used cars. Right, just mm, Mitsubishi Montero. No, no, no. We're not buying any until next year. Okay. There's a moratorium on any all right, all right, vehicle right. purchases. <laughs> but uh, I, I, it was so tempted. I saw uh, uh, the first generation uh, Toyota Tacoma oh. with the, uh, the 22R. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, one yeah. owner, 99,000 miles. Those are almost impossible to find. Well, I had four wheel a, drive. Yeah, I had twelve thousand dollars though. 99,000 miles, twelve thousand dollars for it like, was the first, was first or second gen Tacoma. That would be a first Tacoma. First Tacoma. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. Pristine. I mean, pristine. $12,000, though. Well, remember, I used to have a Tacoma. Yeah. I dearly missed that truck. Yeah. I loved but, that truck. Yeah. My wife hated it. Yeah. Wife hated it. Yeah, well, it was a truck. It, was, it drove and drove and 
hauled like a truck. It did everything it was supposed to do, and then she drove it one day and dropped a gear accidentally and nearly ran over a bunch of volunteers at a soup kitchen. So, <laughs> yeah, that, that could have been bad. So, anyway, um, guys, we want your comments below because you may have noticed there's a lot of things missing. We were talking about Toyota. Have you noticed there are no Nissan or Toyota trucks on the uh, bonus truck part? That's really strange to me, especially Nissan. You'd think that the Titan would be there at the very yep. least. It's not. Yep. So, there's a lot of vehicles that are missing from this list. And we also want to hear about your experiences when you've recently bought a used vehicle. What type of discount did you get? Did you get a discount? Let us know. And if you want to buy a used F-250, Nathan, that's yes. listed, we're selling it right now over at TFL Bids, our new auction site, all trucks all the time. Actually, uh, we've got some pretty cool vehicles up there now. We've got the F-250, we've got uh, a Jeep. Yeah. And now you may be thinking to yourself, that's not a truck. It's a truck, it's, it's got, got a frame. It's body on frame. Yeah, uh, it's got a solid rear axle, come uh, on. And a Ram Charger. Yes, the Ram Charger is really cool, and they're really rare. And um, I, God, I wish we started this site, oh, I don't know, about two months ago when I had the Suzuki. I would have put it on there. Ah, Yeah, you could have. Yeah, yeah that's It's also, a truck. It was a, a truck. truck. Body on frame, yeah. So uh, head on over to TFL Bids. Check that out. Your chance. I think our truck is up to like $44,000 right now, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, is still a bargain because uh, it was fifty five when we bought it, plus we put like fifteen k into it. I put a $10,000 bid on it, hoping to get it for ten grand. Did it work? No. It's a, it's a, it's a beast of a truck. <laughs> I'm, a I'm looking at it right now. I'm going to <laughs> very sorry to see it go. I actually, to be honest, mm -hmm. I'll be sorry to see it go, but I won't because it takes up a lot of garage. Oh my God, this thing takes up the space of two trucks. It's and not just, just not just like 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 horizontally, but vertically as yeah, well. Yeah, it, it, it blocks out the sun. It's just it's it's a beast. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining us. Happy Thanksgiving. Absolutely, guys. Uh, and if you're buying a vehicle, uh, let us know what you're buying and why you bought it. We'd love to actually know. All right, guys. Take care of yourselves. Be safe out there. See you next time. Ciao.